if the stars hadn't aligned, two of the most remarkable spacecraft ever launched never would have gotten off the ground. In this case, the stars were actually planets, the four largest in the solar system. NASA would build two space vehicles to take advantage of that once in more than lifetime opportunity, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin unveiled Monday its plan for a private space station called Orbital Reef, which it will build in partnership with multiple space companies and expect to deploy between 2025 and 2030. The Voyager spacecraft and two of the five spacecraft currently on trajectories that will take them out of the solar system. Both spacecraft actually left the heliosphere behind and entered interstellar space in the 2010s and will, when Voyager 2 passes Pioneer 10 in 2023, become the two most distant spacecraft from Earth for the foreseeable future. Voyager 2 was launched on August 20th, 1977, 16 days before its twin Voyager 1, which exited the solar system's northern hemisphere in 2012. Voyager 2 was sent on a long journey that allowed it to make encounters with Uranus and Neptune, and to this day, it's the only spacecraft to have visited these planets up close. It then made for the southern hemisphere of the heliosphere, the outermost region of the solar system, sometimes referred to as the bubble, straight for interstellar space. When the Voyagers were being built, only one spacecraft had used a gravity assist to reach another planet. The Mariner 10 probe got one from Venus while en route to Mercury. But the Voyagers would be attempting multiple assists with margins of error measured in tens of minutes. Jupiter, their first stop, was about 10 times farther from Earth than Mercury. But in the early 1970s, Pioneer 10 and 11 flew through it unscathed. The belt turned out to be mostly empty space, paving the way for Voyager. A team of scientists has detected sudden bursts of cosmic rays around the Voyagers. The bursts, they report, are caused by shockwaves emanating from soda eruptions that spew particles out at a million miles an hour. The shockwaves take more than a year to reach the Voyagers, but when they do, they excite cosmic ray electrons nearby. Scientists have observed similar phenomena closer to home, around Earth, and our planetary neighbors, but never in interstellar space. Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are the only other spacecraft that have traveled farther than 50 astronomical units AU from our Sun. The distance equals about 5 billion miles, 7.5 billion kilometers. When scientists on Earth send a command to New Horizons, it requires 7 hours to reach the distant spacecraft. Traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, or about 300,000 kilometers per second, then the scientists must wait another 7 hours to know if the message was received. On April 17, 2021, New Horizons became the fifth human-made object to reach this rare space milestone. The Sun resides some 26,000 light years from the Milky Way Center in a tendril of our home galaxy known as the Orion Arm. Every 230 million years, the Sun and the solar system it carries with it makes one orbit around the Milky Way Center. Though we can't feel it, the Sun traces its orbit at an average velocity of 450,000 miles an hour. The Sun formed more than 4.5 billion years ago when a cloud of dust and gas called a nebula collapsed under its own gravity. As it did, the cloud spun and flattened into a disk. With our sun forming at its center, the disk outskirts later accreted into our solar system, including Earth and the other planets. The sun's gravity can keep objects into its orbits far beyond where the heliosphere ends. As the voyagers continue on their journey, eventually they'll enter the Oort Cloud, a region of icy objects past Pluto. Because those objects are gravitationally bound to the sun, they still count as ours. Voyager 1 is now outside the heliopause, an area sandwiched between the hot solar plasma and the cooler interstellar medium at the outer reaches of the solar system. The probe traveling at 38,000 miles per hour is now venturing through interstellar space, a region characterized by exceptionally low densities of matter. Unlike its sibling, Voyager 1 can measure the vibrations of plasma in the interstellar medium thanks to its onboard plasma wave system. These vibrations occur at a very specific frequency called the plasma frequency which is directly related to the density of the plasma Voyager is passing through. Stella Ocker, a PhD candidate at Cornell University and the first author of the new study, explained in an email. By measuring how the plasma frequency changes over time, we can build a map of how the plasma is distributed along Voyager's trajectory and learn more about the processes that determine how that plasma behaves and interacts with particles and magnetic fields in the interstellar medium. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 officially left the solar system as it crossed the heliopause, the boundary that marks the end of the heliosphere and the beginning of interstellar space. This happened in 119 astronomical units from the Sun, 1 AU is 93 million miles or 149.6 million kilometers 
roughly the distance between the Sun and Earth. This spacecraft was able to analyze the makeup of solar winds, the composition and behavior of plasma particles, the interaction of cosmic rays, the structure and direction of magnetic fields, and other traits that define the edges of the solar system. The spacecraft generates about four fewer watts of power annually, limiting the number of systems they can operate. The mission team has turned off equipment to reserve power. No science instruments have been powered down yet. The goal is to keep the Voyagers running beyond 2025, according to NASA. Both Voyagers are expected to last another five years or so until their batteries die out. Both are powered by electricity generated by the heat of radioactive plutonium. As the plutonium diminishes, the spacecraft receives less and less energy. Once the Voyagers shut down, there will be no more data from beyond our solar system for years. In 2017, the probe fired thrusters that were used during its initial planetary encounters during the 1970s, and they still worked after remaining unused for 37 years. The aging probes produce very little power per year, so subsystems and heaters have been turned off over the years so that critical systems and science instruments can keep operating. But readouts from the probe's Attitude, Articulation and Control System AACS, don't accurately reflect what's actually happening on board. The Attitude, Articulation and Control System AACS, controls the 45-year-old spacecraft's orientation. Among other tasks, it keeps Voyager 1's high-gain antenna pointed precisely at Earth, enabling it to send data home. All signs suggest the Attitude, Articulation and Control System AACS, is still working, but the telemetry data it's returning is invalid. Voyager 1's signal hasn't weakened either, which suggests the high-gain antenna remains in its prescribed orientation with Earth. Before the Voyager missions, scientists predicted that the solar bubble just sort of dissolved into interstellar space as you ventured farther and farther from the Sun. Voyager 2 seems to confirm that, in fact, that's a very, very sharp boundary there, says Donald Gurnett of the University of Iowa, the lead author of this paper. The Sun consistently spews out shock waves of plasma called coronal mass ejections CMEs, which help shape the rest of the solar system. Turns out the Sun's impact goes beyond its own borders. Supernovae send shock waves out into the galaxy as well, stirring the interstellar medium, albeit at a much more intense scale than CMEs. It's still far from an agreement that a UFO or aliens were in this business because the most likely chance is that something went wrong with the programming of the Voyager. Now that we've come to the end of this video, I want to thank you for sticking with me, and I'd love to know what you think of it. Just comment down below. Also, if you like this video, make sure you like it and you stay safe. This video is over, but if you want to see more, there is one on your screen right now, and there are a few more fun videos coming soon. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, and be happy, guys.